By the end of the 1940s, it was clear that the era of piston-engined fighters was over. New jet-powered birds were already spreading their wings. And even though the U.S. was one of the earliest and the most enthusiastic adopters of modern aircraft configurations, the Korean War made the U.S. military realize that it was still not enough. Pilots that faced Soviet MiGs requested an aircraft that would be simpler, lighter, and faster than the F-86 Sabre. By 1952, Kelly Johnson, who was the chief engineer at Lockheed Skunk Works, had drafted over 100 aircraft proposals, ranging from relatively small designs to large 20-ton beasts. In order to find the optimal configuration for their new plane, he and his team made more than 400 launches, testing different wing types and tail units. One of the resulting designs, the L-246, eventually became the progenitor of the whole F-104 series. Johnson and his men presented the design to the USAF, who were interested enough to create a new official proposal that very year, inviting several industry leaders to participate. The list of companies competing for the contract included the Republic Aviation Corporation, North American Aviation, Northrop Corporation, and General Electric. Lockheed faced fierce competition but persevered and was granted a development contract early the next year. Just one month after the contract was signed, engineers completed the first wooden mock-up, and the first prototype was ready in 1954, after just one year of development. As a result of this unexpectedly rapid pace, the J-79 engine was still unavailable and so the first trials had to be conducted with the less powerful J-65 engine. Nevertheless, the result was very impressive. Even an incomplete variant of the aircraft exceeded expectations. After the initial success, development stalled. But after a few more years, the project was finally back on track. The aircraft was lengthened to accommodate a more powerful engine and, as a result of rigorous testing, received a lot of other improvements. In 1958, the USAF received their first batch of F-104 Starfighters. Nobody expected the new aircraft to just start beating world records right from the get-go, but that's exactly what it did. The Starfighter was the first production aircraft of its class to achieve Mach 2 and the first aircraft to reach an altitude of 30,000 meters after taking off under its own power. Pilots that had to fight starfighters during training often felt that the matchup was simply unfair. With such a long list of achievements, it's no wonder that people were ready to overlook an equally long list of technical difficulties attached to the plane, from its high fuel consumption rate to its underdeveloped engine prone to overheating. The F-104A variant received the M61 Vulcan, a famous six-barrel rotary autocannon. It was the very first time the gun was fitted on an aircraft. The Starfighter also featured wingtip stations that could be used to carry Sidewinder missiles or fuel tanks. The F-104C variant, which was produced a bit later, was fitted to carry an even wider array of payload options. The US wasn't the only client that Lockheed had, though. The company also produced export versions of the aircraft and allowed other nations to build their own starfighters under license. For example, Germany employed the F-104G, which was modified to fit the role of an all-weather multi-role aircraft. Japan also had its own interceptor variant, the F-104J. Italy is a bit of a special case here. They developed their own variant of the F-104, the F-104S, equipped with the powerful J-79 GE-19 engine. Furthermore, in the mid-1980s, Italy started producing an even more advanced version of the aircraft, fitted with a new radar and AS-speed missiles. As it was made by Air Italia, it was accepted into service as Air Italia Starfighter F-104S.ASA. The Starfighter was extremely fast indeed, but to achieve that, engineers had to make sacrifices, and it was mainly to the reliability of the aircraft. Nowadays, many remember the Starfighter not for its speed, but for being plagued by technical difficulties and just being a dangerous plane to fly. Germany, Italy, and Canada each lost approximately a third of their respective fleets of F-104s. If you take just Germany, that's almost 300 aircraft out of commission in just 28 years of service. 
To be fair, some operators didn't have any problems with the Starfighter at all. For instance, Spain was an active operator that didn't lose a single aircraft. Nevertheless, by the early 1990s, most operators retired the F-104. Italy kept on modernizing the aircraft for a little while, but in 2004, they too finally retired this relic of the past. All in all, more than 2,500 starfighters rolled off the factory floor, but aircraft of the series were never widely used in actual combat. The starfighter saw action in Vietnam, in some local conflicts, and that was it. There are lots of aircraft of the Starfighter series scattered all around the tech trees, from the early F-104A all the way up to the technical marvel that is the F-104S. You can find them at ranks 6 and 7 of the tech trees belonging to the US, Germany, Italy, Japan, and China. What do you think about the legendary missile with a man in it? Tell us in the comments below.